This is the second segment of the second training session. Next, we will discuss our system temperature ratings. Cables and cable bus are typically rated at two temperatures. They are generally 90 degrees Celsius for low voltage or 105 degrees Celsius for medium and high voltage. Most switchgear is only rated for 75 degrees Celsius. There is generally some confusion around temperature ratings of a switchgear and equipment. For example, some engineers think that a superior bus is only capable of running at 75 degrees Celsius. This is not the case. A superior bus is designed to run at almost any temperature rating the customer requires. A conductor running 90 degrees Celsius for extended periods of time will see no detrimental effects if it is rated at 90 degrees. Similarly, with medium voltage, an MV105 conductor can run at 105 degrees Celsius all day, every day, and still maintain a 50-year conductor life. The mismatch happens when the switchgear or the transformer cannot handle the temperature the conductor is running at. Some equipment manufacturers may not know their actual equipment temperature ratings. As a result, we have to be careful to ensure that the customer understands the rating of the equipment that the superior bus is being connected to. We work with our customers to ensure their installation is safe. Next, we will discuss Ampacity. Ampacity is calculated by the Insulated Cable Engineers Association, ICEA, standards. The National Electric Code, NEC, and Canadian Electric Code, CEC, standards states that if the cables cannot be cooled efficiently in a conduit or cable tray, the system must be significantly derated for safety. A superior bus is balanced and the conductor spaced appropriately so that no derating is required. We perform tests to back up our design. Our products have had heat rise and short circuit tests conducted to ensure that the systems we build are safe and meet or exceed the electrical codes. Because of this, we are able to apply a certification sticker to our system. This testing and analysis is what sets us apart from tray, pipe and wire, or armored cable on struts. We have the testing and certifications to back up our claims that Superior Bus is safe. We have slightly different ratings in Canada as the electrical code is more stringent. All of our systems are designed to be co-compliant with both the NEC and the CEC. Voltage drop is the result of the number and size of conductors running through a system. All of our systems are designed to achieve the voltage drop required by the customer. If a customer gives us a specific voltage drop, we will design the system to match their specific needs. To lower the voltage drop, the size of the conductors must be increased. To increase voltage drop, the conductor size is reduced. We can make adjustments to our system to meet the voltage drops required. The industry standard is 3% and 5% overall for a power feeder system if no specific voltage drop is required. A superior bus is generally capped at a 3% voltage drop. If we need to go above that, generally due to a long system length, we ensure the customer is aware so that they can take the voltage drop into account during their electrical analysis to make sure that it is not an issue. If there is an issue, we can increase the size or number of conductors to lower the voltage drop to the range required. Voltage drop varies linearly with distance. For example, voltage drop over 100 feet would be twice as much as a voltage drop over 50 feet, using the same number and size of conductors. The voltage drop on a cable bus system as compared to other wiring methods can be much lower. A voltage drop on a parallel system, that is, a system using parallel conductors to move power from one location to another, has some issues that need to be taken into account. The first is the skin effect of the conductors. This changes how electricity moves through the conductors. The second is the proximity effect of the conductors around it. The reactance of the system can be changed due to magnetic fields and eddy currents that impact the surrounding conductors based on the arrangement of the cables. As a result, balancing and cable arrangement have a large effect on the voltage drop of a power distribution system. As such, the volt drop on a cable bus is much lower than the voltage drop on a cable tray application as the conductors are arranged in a specific order within a superior bus. The lack of balancing within a cable tray leads to unequal conductor loading. When a superior bus is designed for a customer, a full finite element analysis, or FEA, is performed on the system as mentioned in the previous training session. This allows us to determine the system voltage drop before the production begins. The analysis is included with the customer approval package so that the customer understands the system voltage drop and can request a change if necessary. 
Let's move on to short circuits. One of the major differences between cable bus and any other wiring method is the short circuit rating. In a balanced system, the conductors are arranged according to phase within a superior bus. The arrows shown on the presentation slide are the kinetic forces from the cables as power is transferred through them at a 50 or 60 hertz frequency. In the event of a 100 kilo amp or Ka short circuit, 100,000 amps are going to run through the conductor on the phase that has a fault. On a bus bar, a single conductor takes a full 100 Ka load. This results in massive forces generated between the bus bars. A superior bus splits the load through multiple conductors. For example, a system running five conductors per phase is subjected to a 100 Ka short circuit, and each conductor only bears 20 Ka, which significantly cuts down the magnetic forces generated during the fault. In a cable tray, cables are secured generally using zip ties to the bottom rung. During a fault, the magnetic fields generated pulls the cables away from each other. When this happens at 50 to 60 hertz, it creates a massive vibration in the cable tray, which results in the conductors tearing through the ties and damaging the tray, or the straps will cut into and destroy the conductor insulation. Part of the short circuit rating of the cable bus is due to the cable bracing. Since the conductors are balanced in a superior bus due to the phase arrangement, the force only peaks on one conductor at any given time in its surrounding area. In a cable tray, all of the phases are laid out in rows. During a short circuit on one phase, all of the cables will pull away from each other at the same time, magnifying the effect of the short circuit, which can cause significant damage to the system. As mentioned earlier, the support blocks in a superior bus are very important during a short circuit. The polyethylene cable guides act as shock absorbers inside the rigid blocks and are designed to be softer than the insulated conductor jacket. The CPE or PVC jacket on the conductor is harder than the cable guide, so the guide bears the impact of the short circuit, preventing damage to the cables. This allows the conductor to continue running its daily cycle. This is a massive advantage of Superior Bus over any other system. In the rare event that the cable guides are damaged, they are simple and inexpensive to replace. If a bus duct experiences a short circuit, According to code, it has to be de-energized, shut down, and inspected for damage. In a superior bus, as long as the fault current is at or below the short circuit rating, the conductor is left to cool until they are below the maximum operating temperature, then the system is ready to re-energize. There is nothing prone to failure during a short circuit for a superior bus. The conductors cannot fail or short out as they are held by non-metallic, non-magnetic support blocks that are also UV resistant and flame retardant. All of the topics we just covered are intertwined as part of the system. The next section is on system balance. We design each superior bus so the highest temperature in our system is at most the maximum temperature rating for the conductor. For example, we can limit the ampacity of a system when the first conductor hits 90 degrees Celsius if that's the temperature rating of the system. Same thing if it was rated for 75 degrees Celsius. As you can see on the image shown in the presentation slide, the hottest conductors are the brightest red. This is one of the biggest differences between a superior bus and a cable tray system. An FEA analysis is not done with a cable tray, and as a result, the temperature of the conductors in a cable tray is unknown. A properly balanced system will ensure that the current flowing through the conductors is within 3% of each other. Many engineers assume that all conductors share equal loading. For example, four cables carrying 2,000 amps means that each cable theoretically carries 500 amps. In reality, the proximity effects, eddy currents, and the induced current from the magnetic field pulsating around any type of parallel system changes how the conductors transmit the current. Three out of four conductors could be carrying more load than the rated impacity, while the other conductor may be carrying much less. With analysis and testing, we can back up our ampacity claims, and this is why we don't have to take the extra D ratings that a cable tray installation would require. We adjust our phase arrangements inside the cable bus to achieve the best balance possible. For example, a system that uses 750 MCM conductors rated at 855 amps maximum per conductor will generally carry 830 to 835 amps in a superior bus. If the system is not well balanced, one or more of the conductors will carry a much higher load. In the event of a short circuit, this creates more stress on the conductors, which can result in premature conductor failure. 
Not all manufacturers follow this doctrine. Superior Bus is a system that has been worked on and tested for many years. The FEA software we use is also used by NASA and is very robust and informative. Using this software has taught us a lot about cable bus design. It's also shown us that the simple voltage drop calculation used by many engineers is not adequate for calculating voltage drop in a parallel system. Please contact us to set up a go-to meeting virtual meeting. Martin will take you through a comparison of balanced and unbalanced systems in greater detail and answer any questions you may have. We hope you've enjoyed this training session and look forward to working with you again in our next session.